Welcome to another episode of Mad Props. We are so excited to have you here. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers out there that may have celebrated yesterday. Um, this is episode 75. We're almost at the century mark of Mad Props, which is amazing to think. Um, with the, the hiatus and all the other stuff that's gone on, it's crazy to think that we're, we're really that close. Um, and thank you guys so much for joining. Before we get started, make sure you follow us on social media at Mad Props Pod on Instagram, X, and Facebook. Or you can follow us at Schnabel Studios on Instagram, X, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, and on TikTok. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video so it can get through the whole analytic wave streams of everything. And if you're listening to it, which we really appreciate the listeners as well, make sure that you follow was it you subscribe to the podcast you like the podcast and you leave a comment to tell us what you think about the podcast that's all the stuff if you're on youtube you can also leave a comment that's all the stuff that we need to tell you about for this episode so this episode it's a solo cast it's just me um i'm going to kind of give some upcoming announcements about schnabel studios as a whole and mad props not the shows or anything like that just some stuff we're going to be doing in the future um and then we're going to talk about off stage a little bit it is the almost 10 i think it's the eight or nine year anniversary of our first showing 2016 so that'd be nine years or eight years i don't know i'm not that smart but anyway so we're going to talk a little bit about off stage just be, just because of this achievement that we've reached, um, not achievement, but anniversary that we've reached of it being almost 10 years old. So that's what we're going to get into here on Mad Props. But before we do all that, of course, we need to run the titles. Let's start it. This is Mad Props. Thank you guys so much again for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to my voice. We really appreciate that. Please, you know, leave comments and stuff like that. We'd love to hear from you guys as we go on and on and on. Um, someone brought up that they saw I was wearing a ring on one of the episodes and asked if I was engaged or married or anything like that. I am not. This is an aura ring. It is a fitness ring. Um, as people know, I lost a lot of weight in the last couple of years, and I have been very much on my uh, weight loss journey still. And I just keep up. I try to keep so much up with my fitness. I used to wear a watch all the time, which you may notice is gone as well. Um, and for my recent birthday, my girlfriend Mary got me the aura ring, and I have been, you know using it with everything i use it when i play basketball I use it when i play baseball i use it when i run when i work out i use it for everything it is really good a quick review of it with no sponsorship at all by the way it's really good though there's two things one one thing that we saw that was very concerning is people said the battery was really bad um i just i charge it when i go take a shower every single time i've never really been below 70 ish percent battery in the entire time i've had it. i've had it for like three weeks now so that's one. The one thing that's a little frustrating is it scratches really, really easily. Like really, really easily. And you just kind of have to get over the fact that it's going to have scratches on it. Um, that would be the one thing. Like I wish they were able to make it rubber. If it was a rubber one, it would be really great. I understand everything would break inside of it as you do things. That's why it's very solid. Um, but that is probably my biggest thing on this aura ring is it scratches so incredibly easily and it's upsetting because i look at the scratches that i have on it all of the time because i'm very disappointed by it but anyway that's what the ring is it's an aura ring it's for my fitness and stuff like that i use it when i play my baseball games and the new thing i'm doing which i haven't updated on baseball games in a while we can get into that in a second so i'm starting to play in a men's uh rec basketball league as well uh, for many of the listeners out there, you know that I have very much gotten into basketball the last couple of years. I was not a basketball player until maybe three years ago. That's when I really, really started playing basketball. And now I play it religiously. I play it almost every day. And I'm, I joined a league. And it actually starts the day of this recording. So I have no stats or anything to update you on. You'll have to wait until the next episode or something like that to be updated on the stats. But I'll let you guys know how it goes. <laughs> um I'm very excited to be playing. I've only played like organized basketball outside of like a college rec 
in like two separate games. I played like a little bit when I was younger, when I was really heavy, and I played in like this league that played in my old elementary school. Um, I don't really even count that because it was like two or three teams and whatever. And then I played a couple of games here and there. Like I played a game in Spokane, one game I filled in for somebody. Like I never really actually played in a league, and especially now that I, you know, can play. I'm I'm highly decent at basketball now, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. I can't wait to share updates and stuff like that. If we date, if we get photos, I'll share some photos and all that stuff on the Mad Props page. So make sure you're following us on that Mad Props page if you want to stay updated on that. Um, so for this episode, the we'll, we'll do some of these updates first because I have some like kind of exciting updates that we're trying to do. Um, I'm not going to publicly announce it on social media until we really get it going, but I, I want to give something to our listeners, right? So uh, I want to give this update of a potential thing we may do, and then um, I want to talk about uh, um, offstage a little bit because it's been an anniversary of nine years or eight years. or I think it's nine years since recording, eight years since showing or something like that. So we'll get into that in a second, and I have all that stuff written down. So the first thing I want to talk about is a way we are trying to give back a little bit. As you see, I'm grabbing something. I'm trying not to mess up my cords. So um, I was going through some old stuff, as everyone that watches knows, like my background's changed a lot and stuff like that. We moved around a lot. We're now settled into a spot. And we wanted to start to give back in some way to our fans. But at the same time, we also I'm trying to clean out a lot of my production stuff as bigger productions come in and we just don't need as much as we used to. Um, so the first thing I, I felt like was good to get rid of, felt, first thing I felt like was good to get rid of are some show notes from former shows um, that we have from, and like this one here on top is the Darren FC interview questions and you see you can see it's all marked off if you're watching for people that are listening it is the interview questions that we used for Darren Nefsi um Ray and I it's marked off it has notes on it all sw you know switched around and stuff like that I have we have a bunch of them here um sorry for people that are listening because this won't be on social media just yet because I have bigger plans for it but the next one I'm showing here is Carter Caps. It has the cross-offs and the highlights and all that for Carter Caps. Um, trying to find one with a little more pizzazz to it other than just here's another one of Darren Nefsey. So one of these was mine and one of these was Ray's uh, when Ray was co-hosting with us. Here's a uh, – here, here's one of um, RJ Santillo where there's notes at the bottom of something that came up. I guess I was taking notes during the actual recording. So there's a bunch of these. We have a whole stack of these interview questions and stuff like that um, that we are looking to, to give away or to auction off or something like that. My two, my two things are, one, to use them as a giveaway um, because we want to – start getting a, a community together where we can interact and stuff like that with each other. It would be part of a giveaway. The bigger picture one is to get some of these signed by the people that were a part of it and start doing auctions or something like that where you can own, you know, theor theor theoretically, you can own the Darren Nefsi questions sheet signed by Darren Nefsi or the, you know, Vince Papali um, run, show run signed by Vince Papali. So that's kind of like what we're thinking of doing. Very, very much in the beginning of the works. So nothing is guaranteed just yet. But we're going to start thinking of doing that. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff there that we are looking to, to, to move on from. A bunch of show notes and stuff like that that we're looking to clear out the office with. And, you know, it could be yours and you might be able to get, you know your favorite signature from someone much, much better than you'd get it anywhere else because this show is still so small. So just something to look out for, for our listeners, you know, people that are following just on social or just follow different things. They won't know this stuff, 
because it's not going to be posted anywhere else just yet because it's so in the works. But for my listeners that would listen 10 minutes into an episode, um, that is a little secret for you guys. So thank you guys for listening. And that's a little thing to share with you. So keep it close to the vest. Anybody that's listening um, <laughs> or watching, keep it close to the vest because it's something we're trying to build up. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about offstage. Um, I don't want to go too in-depth into offstage of the actual show itself because there's plenty of episodes of this and other other podcasts that you can find by me that talk about offstage. Um, I could talk about it in, in like very lightly. Like I could talk about it just a little bit. Um, it was a documentary series by myself um, that I did. I got out of college. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll just say the, the beginning story very, very briefly. I created offstage as a documentary um, when I was getting out of – when I was getting out of college, I specifically did it not to start a documentary series, not to be a filmmaker, not to do, not to get into film festivals, not to do any of that. I did it specifically to keep my skills sharp for when I start looking for jobs. That's it. That's the only reason I started off stage at the time. Um, it was supposed to be with a bigger band. You can go listen to old episodes about offstage on Mad Props itself, or you can hear about that stuff. But there were supposed to be some bigger bands. They backed out, and we ended up going with Damon St. Cloud because I heard him on Music Choice, which was like Time Warner's music channel thing. And I heard um, Charlie Bartlett on there, and I was like, oh, this song is really good. I like this. And we went from there. So uh, we get Damon on. We do the documentary. It, it it's, you know, grueling editing process. I've never done this before. I'm editing a full documentary. And mind you, I'm about 21 years old at this point. Um, put it all together, submitted it to a bunch of places. And this is going to be more about it getting into the anniversary of it getting into its first festival. So as I talk, I'm going to pull out some stuff here. This one, no, it's this one. So the folder for people watching, the folder is a bunch of old show things that I've had, that I've, you know, collected throughout the years um, from different Schnabel Studios documentary things. And um, the show notes are in here and the NASCAR notes are in here. There's a lot of things. So that's why I'm saying there might be some cool giveaways coming out for Schnabel Studios because there's just been a lot of really great stuff to, to come around. Okay. So I have a couple of things here because a couple of stuff is still boxed away. Um, so for people that don't know about this one, the first time we ever showed offstage Damon St. Cloud was at the 2016 New Haven Docks Festival. Um, it was shot in New Haven, Connecticut, so that's why it helped to get in. But it was the first time ever that I had a documentary um, or anything shown. You know, I was com kind of coming off a high um, because we just won our student Emmy, like right before this, I think it was. Like it was like a month before this. We won a student Emmy um, for our live football broadcast. Brandon Gill and I were the um, we were the directors and producers. I say directors and producers because we kind of shared the titles, um, but we were directors and producers of that. And then I get a film into a film festival, which was really exciting. So this is the a cutout of, you see it's highlighted there if you're watching, and I'll explain it in a second if you're not. But it's a cutout from one of the show pages. It just tells us that at 9 p.m. on June 4th, offstage Damon St. Cloud will be showing. And so we, we cut this out and we put it into, um, I used to have in my background, actually, if you go to some old episodes, I used to have a, uh, a big poster board with all the offstage stuff on it with a bunch of different show notes and things like that, which also may en end up in some of these giveaways and stuff like that. Um, so let's go back really quick to the documentary itself. So it gets into the documentary. A festival, sorry, the festival itself. It gets into the festival, and they decide that they're going to show it at 9 p.m. on June 4th. Now, for people that don't know, June 4th is my birthday. So this was going to be on my birthday that my first ever film showing was going to happen. So it was really exciting. Um, and 
also that weekend, though, we were doing our documentary on NASCAR. So that NASCAR documentary that we talk about a ton, um, that also happened in 2016. I'm, I apologize. The, the student Emmy happened in 2015. So it was a year after this. Um, but like we were also shooting a documentary about NASCAR at the same time. And you know what, for the people watching and the people listening, I'll, I'll explain it for the people listening, but for the people watching, I'll, I'll pull out some of that stuff as well. So we can kind of talk about that. So as you can see here, if you're watching, this is the tricky triangle, the Pocono Raceway photographer, um, whatever. This is like the, the things to know, has a map of the, the place. This was in 2016. Um, the official race right here was June 5th, 2016. So let me explain how this weekend went. So my first film is being shown June 4th, 2016. On Thursday, June 2nd, we are down in the Poconos for a uh, meet, meet the Press event for the Tricky Triangle documentary. Let me, let me restart this because it's, it might be confusing. June 4th, 2016, Damon Saint, uh, offstage Damon St. Cloud is showing at the New Haven Docs Film Festival, my first ever showing of a documentary or film in any festival. That same weekend, we are for Banner Sports Journal doing the Pocono Raceway documentary that we decided to do. So this is how that weekend went. June 2nd, Thursday, we are in Poconos at 1 p.m. for a Meet the Press event with a bunch of NASCAR drivers. We get to see the garages. They do a bunch of press, all that stuff. June 3rd, the day before, starting at 1030, the gates open. Another Meet the Press, a practice run, trial runs, all that stuff for happening at 1030. Saturday, June 4th is where the fun really begins. We are down in the Poconos at 8 a.m., 8 a.m. in the Poconos to make sure we can get some documentary footage. Now, for people that don't remember, because it was 2016, the second, or sorry, the third and the fourth, it was raining all day. So we're taking footage and we're doing all this stuff in the pouring rain, okay? So it was raining all day. We're taking all the footage, though, and then we have to jump in the car and drive all the way up to New Haven, Connecticut, because that night, offstage Damon St. Cloud is showing. Now, I am not really a uh, partier anymore. It's kind of been out of my blood for a little bit. But at the time, you know, fresh out of college, I was. And let me tell you, the party and after party for the documentary, I showed up to that thing very, very, uh, very, very full of, of juice, let's just say. Um, I was so excited. I was ready to, I was ready to party. I was, I was getting a documentary shown my film. I created this. I edited this. I shot this. I, I conceptualized this. Like I did everything and it was being shown. We had a good after party as well. Um, which was unfortunate because June 5th, the next day at 10 AM is when the gates opened for the actual Pocono raceway, tricky triangle race. So this is the official official race. We get up, we're, we're get out, Dave Puglisi and I get together and get down to the Poconos and we are cooked. We're exhausted because, you know, we're, we're celebrating. Also, Dave was also a part of Offstage Damon St. Cloud's production team. So he was at the film festival with me and then he came to, he came to the Poconos with me the next day and we were just shot. We were, we were, oh my goodness, it was exhausting. Guess what? It rained. The race didn't even happen on Sunday. So we went all the way down there, completely hung over, just trying to get everything we can. Didn't happen. We go back up to Connecticut so I can drop Dave off. I stay there. I go back to the Poconos on Monday because that's when the actual race happens. We get all the footage. The funny thing about all this with the NASCAR documentary series is it's so much work that we did. And guess what? They canned it anyway because they gave us a cease and desist. They didn't want us to do something without the permission of NASCAR races, films, or something like that. So we ended up not getting it anyway. But that is how that weekend went. One weekend, 
going from New York to the Poconos, which if people don't know, Poconos is in uh, Pennsylvania, to New Haven, Connecticut, from Thursday, June 2nd, to Monday, June 6th. This is what was happening. After the race, I did get to go home, finally, and, uh, and rest. And rest uh, myself, because it was an exhausting, exhausting time. Um, but it was awesome. I mean, to, to, for people that have done films before, like that feeling of knowing that something you created, like stood out enough to the point where somebody actually wants to take your work and show it to other people, you know, like you created something that was was good enough that somebody watched it and said, oh, we should show this to other people. Like, this is, this is good stuff. Um, I was personally, like, I think it feels unfinished to me. Like, I feel like there's more that should have been told. But someone out there didn't. Multiple people have gone to, gone to a couple festivals. And, like, that feeling, like, going in. I remember walking in. It was at Yale. And I remember walking in to the theater and seeing the packed house and seeing people. I, I mean, like during the film, I would look around and, and people were, were intensely watching. And then um, at the end of the film, the credits roll and you're because um oh what is it? Damon song comes on and it gets a standing ovation and like that moment will sit with me that because no matter what I do in my career and I'm, I mean we're talking this is almost 10 years ago right and I don't I haven't had a film I haven't produced a film, at least an off-stage film, since 2017. So, you know, we're talking like six years, seven years ago. But being able to bask in that feeling in my early 20s of, like, I created something, someone said I should show this to people, and then it was shown to people, and people liked it. Like, people enjoyed it enough where people clapped. People, it was an amazing feeling. It made me want more, which obviously there was more. You know, Casey comes after that, then Mike Kaplan, um, then Alex Grubard, Bravo, The Ultra, um, Katie Burke, Shane Cook, T-Rex, Bravo. I don't know if I said Bravo or not already, but Bravo, um, Ticker Tape. And even the there was one can one of Sons Lunaris. Like they all came because that film like did something, you know. Whether it was big or small, it did something. So that's kind of my feeling on that. I do get a little emotional thinking about it because it's just such it's awesome to think back and think like that that happened and, and I did something that was, you know, semi-successful. So it's awesome to think about. So in my hand right now, I have the um, information booklet for the New Haven Docs Festival. So for people that don't know, I believe this was the first or second, maybe third. It was one of the, one of the first New Haven Docs Festivals. And every film has a uh, description and their films um photo so a lot of them if you go through this book actually don't have an actual title photo we did we had an actual cover photo with damon st cloud um a lot of them just have screenshots from the film itself because they wanted all of them to have it so we are uh this is this is what we got for off stage damon st cloud christian novel 2016 16 minutes ever wonder what a musician does before a show we follow young Jersey artist Damon St. Cloud before he takes the stage for his first headline show at The Space in Hamden, Connecticut. 
Join us as we see the grind of being a young artist getting ready for his show. Man, ChatGBT would have been awesome to have at this time. <laughs> that was what the lob line was back then. They've gotten better over time. But um, I, we had to submit everything, and I never did any of this before. And I would ask people, like, what is this? What is that? What do we do here? What do we do there? I got some help in some places and, and no help in others. But, I mean, that was the lob line. That is a bad lob line, man. <laughs> that is a bad lob. Let's, let's, let's take a look really quick and a listen. A look and a listen, if you will. So I have the booklet for we got into the next year's New Haven Docs Festival. For people that are, are watching, it's purple. And it says 2017. So we got into this year's. Now, I don't... There is a part of me that remembers that we didn't get a... We didn't get into the booklet because they let us in late or something like that, if I remember correctly. So there might not be a lob line in this one. I also don't quite remember which day we... Um, which day we uh we were shown? I know it was early, so I'm looking here. Let's see. It wasn't it was the Saturday? So it was June third. Let's see. Are we in here? Are we in here? No. So I, I do remember this. So we um didn't make it into the booklet because the booklet was already produced and. We actually reached out to them, and we said we'd like to be part of this year's festival, and we never heard back, and we never heard back. And then I was like, hey, like, I just wanted to reach out again. We'd love to be a part of this year's festival. And they were like, oh, well, the sign-up's too late. And I was like, well, to be honest, I reached out month, like months ago about this. And because they saw I reached out months ago, they let us into the festival. But because of that, we didn't get any, like, we didn't get anything – put into it but they really loved the Casey Grennan one because it was supposed to just kind of fit in somewhere at the end and they moved it all the way to the Saturday night and we did a QA and a afterwards so there was a lot like that that film did like these films man there was a reason I kept going I, I wouldn't have kept going if I thought like I wouldn't have kept going if I thought they were very unsuccessful like I personally looking back at them are like man like they don't seem finished. I would love to go back and like kind of make a five minute continuation of where they are now X amount of years later, which might be something to think of. Might be something to think of. You just saw an idea blossom on, on a podcast. <laughs> you just heard an idea blossom on a podcast, which is hilarious. Um, but I've always felt like they were all kind of unfinished. I think the best episode we had was Bravo because we really dive into all this stuff, but then the, it just finishes so abruptly because we had to finish filming at a certain point and we couldn't really do any more. Like we couldn't go back and do more and he didn't finish the song or anything. So I kind of makeshifted the end. It's almost like snow on the bluff, you know, snow on the bluff. If you don't know, it's about like this, this, uh, this, um, drug mongol right is that is that correct whatever he it's a it's a very much gang related um um documentary that follows one person and uh, curtis snow curtis snow i'm pretty sure his name is and it follows him but the beginning just you could tell is completely fabricated for the film you know what i mean like there are probably other parts that maybe i don't know i personally don't know I, i'm not going to get into that here but the the very beginning is definitely fabricated for the film. And um, that's how the ending of Bravo feels. Like, it feels like it feels that way because it was that way. Like, we were filming with him, and then he, he didn't finish the song at the time. And he went back, and he kind of reworked the entire song in a studio instead of the way he did it. And it's like, well, we're not going to show that. Like, it's, it's more impressive to see him make this whole song in his closet, in his bedroom. Like, that's so sick. 
And uh, so he went to a studio and did it there. But so I kind of I, I hit up a friend of mine at WNHU and I was like, hey, can you play this song and do like an intro and just be like, you're listening to WNHU. This is uh, Stuck by Bravo coming up right here. Brand new, uh, exclusive, something like that. And that's kind of how it ends is that. You know, this, he creates a song and now it's getting radio play, but it just never felt finished. It just never felt finished. And that's how a lot of them felt to me. Like they didn't feel finished. They felt like there's a little more to give. I think if I were ever to do a documentary of an off stage again, which I, I, I've thought about, but not seriously thought about, if I was ever to do one again, though, I'd probably do it a multi day shoot or like it just, it would be, look so much different. That's why I don't know if I'd ever do an off stage again. Because it would just look so much and feel so much different. There was so much I would do from it. But I wouldn't know to do that if I didn't do that in the first place. So, Anyway, all this to be said, it was the uh, anniversary of Offstage's first ever appearance in a film festival. And kind of technically second, right? If it was like the eight year of one, it's the seven year of the other or whatever the, the stuff is. Um, we did post the video on Schnabel Studios of... Um, the uh, the cheering and stuff like that like the we, I, there was one of me kind of panning across the crowd with Damon on the screen and then there was a second one of it getting the standing ovation which is just like yeah it was beautiful it was beautiful so those are on Schnabel Studios Instagram if you want or anywhere you you get Schnabel Studios if you want to check that out. I think Instagram's the easiest to scroll right, scroll back on though if you if you're wondering um but yeah, so uh, maybe we'll put, we'll put a clip it out there of Damon St. Cloud's episode or maybe the preview or something like that just so you guys that have never seen it can kind of get thrown to it and brought to it. It's on Schnabel Studios' YouTube page right now. All of the films from offstage are available for free on the Schnabel Studios' YouTube page. You just go to Schnabel Studios on YouTube, scroll down on playlists. You'll, it's right on the cover, but if you can't find it on the cover, go to playlist. There's an offstage one. You can watch all of them in order. Um, right there. So feel free to do that if you ever wanted to. Um, anyway, thank you guys for listening. Make sure you go subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the YouTube. Like this. Like this. Huh, let me try that again. Like this uh, video. Like this video. Comment on this video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Do all that stuff. It helps us out a lot when you do that. If you're listening, subscribe to the podcast. Like and comment and give five stars. That one I didn't say before. Make sure you give five stars. The more you do that kind of stuff, the more the algorithm pushes it because it shows like, oh, this is pretty good. I should push this along to other people. So do that if you don't mind doing that, please. Uh, make sure you check out a couple weeks ago we had a Julius Thomas on um, talking about his show, Good Guy with a Pun. They're trying to do some press for that. And uh, Demetri Milken as well. Make sure you go check that out because those guys are amazing. If you want to hear more about their show or the creation of it or the journey to get from – from uh, idea to pitch to actually shot to into festivals to winning awards. It's on Mad Props two episodes ago, I'm pretty sure. Go check that out. And make sure you like and subscribe, or make sure you follow us on social media, Mad Props Pod on Instagram, X slash Twitter, and Facebook. Or you can follow Schnabel Studios on Instagram, X slash Twitter. Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and LinkedIn. All of that, all of those places, you're going to find something great. Um, and you can follow us on any of those. Whatever your favorite platform is, you'll see everything we do on all of those. Make sure you, make sure you uh, stay locked in to Schnabel Studios because, like I said, we may try to get a little community going where we'll do some giveaways and we'll do some prizes. Um, some of the prizes that we've been talking about are like five-minute five minute virtual meet and greets with guests that come on. Uh, another one is you know, autograph giveaways from guests or other things, you know, maybe we do a baseball episode and we decide to give away a signed baseball by somebody. It's things like that is what we're thinking of doing. So make sure you lock in, make sure you tune in because you're going to want to, you're going to want to be a part of all that stuff. So we're not sure where the community is going to be or how we're going to do it yet, but we definitely want to do something like that. So thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you next week. This has been mad props. See you later. Get South Nora ring if you like uh, fitness.